What's going on guys? Dr. D here from One Hive Invicta bringing you week two of the CWL Light, where One Hive Invicta uh, went up against Red Onslaught. Um, we had a, a pretty good war here. Town Hall 9s did uh, a great job. We struggled a bit at Town Hall 10. They had some tough bases. Uh, no Town Hall 10 triples to show uh, by other Town Hall 10s. No 10 v10s. Uh, we had some um, 11 v10 uh, bullies, which we're not going to watch today. We're just going to focus on Town Hall 9s. So without further ado, let's hop in and have a look at the war statistics. So here are the basic war statistics for the Red Onslaught War. Um, 72 to 62, uh, you'll see that they had one attack that they didn't use. Uh, 22 triples to 14 triples. Uh, Town Hall 9s um, really got it done quickly. Uh, total destruction 95 to uh, about 91. Um, when we look at the bases here, if you look on, on our side, you can see a miss on Matt. Um, we, they, they could have used that extra star. Um, really, uh, Town Hall 11 struggled in tripling in any of our 10s. They did get uh, one, one of our 10s tripled, and that was a, a 10v10 triple. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, this was a, a triple by one of the Town Hall 11s. Um, as we scroll down, though, you'll see they really struggled with our bases. Uh, blonde, you know, only only getting uh, one star. Um, so uh, all the way even down low. I mean, number 25, Ruda, our, our lowest Town Hall 9, and number 24, our second lowest Town Hall 9, each only being two stars. So they struggled there. Uh, if we flip over and we look at this side, um, you can see that we uh, were able to put up uh, two stars on both of their 11s, and this was from Eris, and Eris is uh, one of our Town Hall 10s. Just a beast, 60%, 58%. Um, then we were able to triple all but one of their 10s. Now, all of these uh, Town Hall 10 uh, triples were done by 11s. Um, and so we're, we're not going to watch any of those, uh, at least this time. We're going to focus on Town Hall 9s for this war. Uh, th they were some great attacks, don't get me wrong, um, but they were dips, and so we're going we're gonna to move past them a little bit. It's worth noting that uh, this Town Hall um, 10 that uh, did not get tripled um, was actually two-starred by uh, HB, who is a Town Hall 9, and we had a lot of Town Hall 9 scouts on um, this war. So you can see, of course, uh, we cleared all of their Town Hall 9s. With all of our Town Hall 9s, um, there, there was not a single uh, Town Hall 10 dip here. So uh, very nice job by our guys. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start this at the bottom, where I uh, usually started. We're going to look at Heartless's attack. Heartless has been doing a lot of Penta Lava Loons. We talked about this um, a little bit in the last video. And so uh, if you look at a, uh, a base like this, if you can get the Enemy Queen and the Clan Castle um, all in one shot, then uh, Penta Lava Loon is a, is a very viable option. Um, he likes Heartless likes to use uh, a Baby Dragon there to make sure that we get that... Um, uh, queen pulled and then in he goes he's just going to rotate them around you'll see that the pathing actually was not the greatest for this uh, but um, he, he goes with the penta anyway uh, and and contrary to what a lot of people do and what we're going to watch in, in another one of the air raids here um, you'll see that uh, you don't actually have to get any of those air defenses taken out uh, so we had um, Savage, we're not going to watch this attack by her, but, but she did an attack where um, she uh, zap quaked uh, one of those, and then I, I don't think she actually pented, though. It might have been a, a, a quad Laloon, but zap quaked in air defense. And there's a lot of different approaches that you can use with this zap quake. Uh, we're going to watch an attack where they use a, um, a very, very... Uh, Cool. I love I love the Skelly spell to take out air defenses or take out the queen if she's distracted. Uh, we'll talk about that when we get to that raid. But uh, we're finishing up here. He has not used his queen's ability yet. He's got a few um, a few troops in the bag. Uh, never did drop his clan castle, which was holding uh, the fifth uh, lava hound. So uh, I, I call this a penta. It's not truly a penta since he only really used four lava hounds. Never sent his max lava hound out there. Uh, just wrecked this face. Very nice job. Uh, finally drops it just at the end for the heck of it, I guess. Uh, pops his queen's ability too at the end there. Wasn't needed. Nice job. Tree stars in the bag. Nice hit, Heartless. 
All right, moving on, we're going to look at number 19, and this was hit by Scott, um, or P-A-B. And so Scott is coming with a Golem Baby Drag, and this base actually gave us a, a little bit of uh, trouble. Um, these lined-up air defenses, kind of uh, interesting, you know, there's a lot of different ways to try and approach this. And Scott comes in with three Golems, and uh, some Wizards to set his funnel, of course. And then a bunch of baby dragons. Oh, and he's got bowlers in the clan castle that he's going to pull out here in just a second. So uh, poison goes down. CC is pulled. Uh, jump is down now. Bowler's going to start moving towards that jump, as are the um, uh, golems. And he's going to have another jump that he can drop down here in just a second. But uh, two air defenses go down very easily. Um, unfortunately, his troops kind of split up a little bit there. And he's not going to get that top air defense with his kill squad the way that he was hoping. Now the plan, I believe, was actually to get the queen um, and everything all the way over into that last section right here and then walk up to that air defense. They're not going to make it. And it, this raid gets a little bit hairy here. So you'll see that he's, he's going to take out most of the point defenses. He's got two archer towers at this point. Uh, point defenses that, that can take on air uh, targets at any rate. Um, finally that uh, Tesla goes down uh, unfortunately those baby dragons kind of clump together and when that happens of course you're gonna lose all of the uh, rage ability that you normally would get with baby dragons but he's still got four in the bag uh, Queen has not used her ability yet now she pops it takes out those two point defenses most what, what's most important is that um, Archer Tower and she does not make it up to that air defense like we were hoping. Um, King gets her, unfortunately. And this is a scary moment because right now he's got an air defense up. He's got at least uh, one point defense that targets uh, air troops and nothing but air troops left. However, <laughs> that hero baby drag winds up getting it down. You'll, if, you, if you notice, there was actually a couple of baby drags who who hopped on that air defense and started taking it out. The air defense, of course, laid a beating on those baby drags, but as soon as they were, it was down to one, that single uh, baby drag under rage just rocked it. And that is it. Tree stars in the bag. Nice job, Scott. Okay. Next, we are going to look at number 17. And number 17 was hit by King. Um, and, of course, King is a, a former 2.0 guy and now back to being a regular 2.0 guy. Um, he took some time in Swarm then sat with us in Invicta for a while, and now he's um, heading back up to 2.0. But he's helping out in the CWLL uh, for this season. And once this season's over, he's heading back up, up to uh, 2.0. But um, he's coming with a Quad Lalo. Um, so uh, take out the queen, and uh, what's what's very nice about this is you've also got an air defense right there. So uh, you can take out that um, air defense, and in the old meta, it used to be if an air defense and queen were together, you would come with a you know a cold blooded uh, goho, or I mean a, a cold blooded lalo. Don't need to do that anymore. You can just um, take them out because people are putting those air defenses right on the outside, hoping to make it more difficult. Um, it, it doesn't doesn't really matter here. Uh, King is gonna rock this base, and you'll see the pathing is not even very good here. But air is just so dominant since the new update that it doesn't matter. We're gonna speed this up just a little bit. Those loons just kind of rip across the center of the base there. Um, the hounds now moving to the last air defense. They will both pop here eventually. Um, and air or, uh, heal while that last air defense gets taken out. And that is it. It is GG. Tree stars in the bag. Uh, just kind of finish off that troll Tesla over there. Nice job, King. Great plan. All right. Now we're going to check out Pale. Palano has like the, the, some of the coolest attacks. And um, every, every recap um, since I came back, I have been struggling to uh, choose the one that I'm going to show of him, but he, he's almost guaranteed to make it. He's, he's, uh, he, he's up there with Heartless as, as some of the coolest attacks ever. Now, you'll see that um, he has a very specific purpose here. He wants to get that 
uh, mortar out of the way so that when he brings his Lalo up top, uh, he will not have to stop at that uh, mortar. Um, so it takes a spell and it takes two loons. Uh, the bad thing is when he does when you do something like that. Oof, um, you only pull out troops that are going to target air defense uh, or air um, other air troops. And so right now there's actually two Valks sitting in that CC that are going to sit there for a while here. Uh, but Pilano, you can see he almost always brings eight wall breakers with the intention of busting through two sets of walls. And he does so here. Busts through a set of walls right there. Um, Queen is in, gets that air defense. Now she's taken out two air defenses. Uh, he still has a queen up there, but if you look, you'll see that he has two skelly spells, and the, the, the plan is to use those skelly spells once that queen is distracted by um, hounds. And so he did bust through that second wall with uh, wall breakers, but it didn't matter. Uh, puts all three of his hounds on that air defense right off the bat. Um, queen is working her way back up here so that she can take out some of these uh, defenses that uh, killed a whole ton of loons here for him. And now that things start moving over towards that other air defense, drops a poison, drops the two skelly spells. Those skelly spells, uh, it, it, along with the, the um, those hounds, those initial hounds, uh, crush that queen. She's done. Everything is targeting those hounds right now. Uh, only has those two loons left, so not a lot of kill power at this point, um, but an awful lot of uh, pups out there helping out. Um, Queen is trying to bust through. Both of these loons are going to survive, take out that last defense. Uh, then it's all about the cleanup. <laughs> there goes, there come those Valks on the Queen. Uh, the Queen does manage to just, just barely kill those Valks. And that is it. It is Tree Stars in the Bag. Nice job, Pelano. All right. Um, what are we doing now? Let's move up and look at number 15. This was Big D. And Big D hit number 15 with a Bolalo. One of my favorite attacks right now. And um, it's been one of my favorite attacks for a while. I like what he does here, though. Um, he, he actually comes with three haste spells, knowing that he's not going to get this AD or this AD with his kill squad, that they're just too far away, but that he can get the queen, and he can get this AD, and he can get this AD, and he can get that um, expo right there. Uh, that, that means that he's going to miss out on an expo up here in these two ADs, uh, so he's, he's going to have his work cut out for him. Um, but uh, those hay spells help to push all of that air, all of those air troops through to get those things as quickly as possible. Um, yeah, he gets Bowler stuck down there, just beaten on a wall, unfortunately. Um, a little better jump placement probably wouldn't have hurt. Uh, but nonetheless, he is up there. All of those Teslas are going to be gone. Um, and kind of fortunately here he's got the expo focusing on those two golems and golemites at this point um, and now he can start bringing in troops and start dropping those uh, haste spells in kind of a circle to work their way right around ah the queen actually did wind up getting up there and taking out that other uh, air defense that we didn't think would would go uh, I think I'm pretty sure that this hound actually lives through the entire raid. So he gets one hound to pop, um, and one hound, uh, maybe this hound pops. I didn't think it did, but it looks like it will. Yep, right there. Oh, but the whiz tower takes out a good chunk of the pups. It doesn't matter. Um, he's got lots of troops for cleanup. It is tree stars in the bag. Nice job, Big D. Okay. We're going to talk about a couple of uh, different attacks now. It's the same attack actually done two different ways, and so we're going to watch them. Uh, and this is the hobo, um, the stoned hobo. We're going to start with Savage. So you can see here that Savage has got uh, two jump spells, and, and this was kind of the more traditional hobo um, on, on some of these tighter bases. You can use two jump spells when you need to be able to get uh, that kill squad all the way in to try and get both... Um, of the 
expos and take out that queen. If you can get two expos and the queen with your kill squad, um, the, then definitely um, that second jump is worth it. Let's go ahead and watch what she does here. So um, she starts, there's a, there's a few different ways to start this as well. And she's going to start with one golem and she's going to try and set this funnel over here. Then she brings in the second golem, very methodical, very slowly. Um, but what she's doing is she's clearing out all these defenses here to push this golem over here to where the second golem is. And once those defenses are cleared out, the third golem comes in and all of those golems meet up. And it is a single jump, very, very nice funnel. And if you can enter or bring those golems in where there is a Tesla farm, you are, you've got a much, much greater chance of success. In fact, some, some of the um, advice I got when I was first starting to do this was if you, if you know where the Tesla farm is, that's almost always where you want to enter, assuming that there is a Tesla farm. Um, if you don't... Uh, then um, your your best bet is maybe to go with uh, m maybe to not bring that second jump um, and to try and wall break in somewhere else. Um, at any rate, she's in. Uh, she has gotten everything that she wanted to get. Uh, not only has she gotten the queen and gotten two expos, uh, she's also managed to trip two of the um, giant bombs. So that means there's only two more giant bombs out there. There's one. Uh, kind of a bad deal though actually um, she loses a whole ton of hogs to springs before that giant bomb even has a chance to take them out so uh, that is it last defense down she's got five hogs here here for cleanup and plenty of other cleanup troops and still two hogs in the bag that she hasn't even dropped yet so nice job rising savage tree stars in the bag and the uh, nice double jump so on a compact base, double jump works works pretty well. Um, on the more open bases, um, a single jump is, is sometimes preferred. So we're going to look at BDE, Big Dog Eats. And he came in with the same army composition, but a single jump. And it's because this base has is, is got a, um, a lot more spread to it, but it's easy to get to the center where you can take get this this queen and ideally um, clear out an awful lot of base uh, by getting into that spot right there. And once you do that, as long as you can get that queen, then ah, uh, and there's the Tesla farm I'm telling you that getting that Tesla farm um, makes this attack so much more successful. Uh, the other nice thing is being able to use a uh, heal on the kill squad and a heal on your hogs, of course. Um, if you're not going to be able to get those expos with your hogs, you're going to need to, I mean, ideally, you'll have a, a heal to push through the expo. Ah, fortunately, his queen, though, locks onto the expo over there, takes it out. Um, almost a swag heal. Uh, not quite, because, boy, he's just got that one hog beaten away there. Um, but that is it. It is tree stars in the bag. Nice job, BDE. All right, guys, that is it. Um, again, here is the uh, final war statistics. It was um, a, a great war. Guys are having a lot of fun um, in, in the CWLL. And uh, best of luck to Red Onslaught in the future. This is Dr. D for uh, One Hive Invicta. Clash on.